Does running the numbers on multifamily deals completely intimidate you? Are you overwhelmed by all the different ways to know if a deal is a good deal or a bad deal? I'm gonna break down how to evaluate any multifamily deal in just five minutes. I'm gonna show you the essential metrics to know, how to run the numbers, and then show you the decision framework to use so that you'll know if a multifamily deal is worth your time or not. Is it a good deal? Is it a bad deal? You'll get all the answers by the end of this video. And I'm not pulling this framework out of some van somewhere. I'm basing it on almost a decade of experience in the industry. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in five minutes or less. All right, let's put five minutes on the clock. Okay, let's begin this simple three-step process to evaluate any deal. I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is, but my time is already ticking away, so I better get going. Step number one, gather the facts. There are three fundamental data points you'll need to get this process started. First of all is income, basically the monthly and annual rental income. Getting the actual numbers from the seller is obviously ideal, but if you don't have that, you can use the number of units times the market rate times the market vacancy rate. And second, you'll need to know the operating expenses of the apartment. Use the industry standard 45% expense ratio to estimate if exact numbers are not available. Ideally, we'd like to get the actual expenses from the property owner, but you know how this goes. You don't always have access to that data. Assume 45%. And lastly, you'll need to calculate the mortgage details. Basically, what is your cost of money? The default terms in today's market are about 25% down, a 7.5% interest rate, and a 25 year amortization period. Obviously the percent down and interest rate will change based on the current market rates. You can get this from your lender. I often go to a lender and say, hey, what are your current terms for the commercial loan in this industry right now? I'm looking to buy an apartment. What can you offer me? Okay, so far, easy peasy, right? Let's get into some real numbers on a deal that I'm evaluating right now that's listed for 1 million bucks. All right, we're gonna look at a real live deal at an apartment complex that is 16 units. Each of the units is a one bedroom apartment. The going market rent for that is $1,000 a month. The 5% vacancy rate is what we use for our calculations. We'll use the industry standard of 45% expense ratio since we don't have data from the seller. And then the lender is going to offer us a 25% down payment loan where we pay a 7.5% interest rate and our amortization schedule is over a 25 year period. Now we move on to step number two in our process. We're going to run the numbers. And once we have the facts, it's time to calculate the key metrics based on the data that we've just collected. And it's very simple. Always, always, always start with revenue minus expenses to calculate your net income. In commercial real estate, we often refer to the net operating income, the NOI. That's really what you might think of as the net income. But we wanna think about the net operating income because this is how the business, the apartment complex performs. Okay, let's calculate the revenue. We want the amount of revenue that we think this property will realistically receive over a year's period. So the potential revenue is all the units times rent times 12. So we know this has a 16 unit apartment complex that has a $1,000 monthly rent times 12. And that gives us a potential revenue of $192,000 a year but we wanna know the effective gross income. And so what we do is we adjust the total revenue times 0.5%, which is the vacancy rate. Now we wanna calculate the effective gross income by adjusting for vacancy. So we take the gross revenue, which is $192,000, and we multiply that by the occupancy rate, which is one minus 0.05 vacancy, which is 192,000 times 0.95, which equals $182,000 and $400 per year in effective gross income. Now, moving on to expenses, you'll subtract your expenses from your revenue. We would ideally use the actual expenses over the last year, but we often don't have real numbers from the seller, so we're gonna do a back of the napkin assumption of the market rate of 45% for the expense ratio. To do that, we calculate the effective gross income times one minus the expense ratio. So it's one minus 0.45, which is 0.55. So when we calculate that all out, we get a little over $100,000 a year in net operating income. Okay, so now you've found the really important number of net operating income. Basically, revenue minus expenses equals your profit. 
This is important because this is how well the apartment complex can operate regardless of whether or not you borrowed money or not. So now if you were buying this property with all cash, you'd be done. You could buy this for a million dollars cash and get about $100,000 per year in return. So let's use those numbers to go ahead and calculate our cap rate. So we know that cap rate is equal to the purchase price divided by the net operating income, which we just calculated. So when you take a million dollar purchase price, divide that by the a little over $100,000 in net operating income, we get a 9.98% cap rate, which is just shy of 10% return. Not too bad, right? But you're probably going to be borrowing money to buy this property. So now let's calculate your free cash flow, which is your net operating income subtracted by your mortgage payments. And this is your free cash flow or the profit from the business after you've borrowed money. So in this case, the bank will lend 75% of the purchase price. So the loan balance will be 0.75 of $1 million, which we know is 750K. We know the interest rate for this loan is 7.5%. Now with an amortization schedule of 25 years, using a financial calculator or a free online mortgage calculator, you'll see that the monthly payment is a little over 5,500 bucks a month. Multiply that times 12 and you'll get an annual mortgage payment of 66,500 and some change. So now it's easy to find your free cash flow or profit. You take your net operating income minus your, your annual mortgage payments and you'll get a net profit number of about 30, $3,000 and some change. Now that we know our net profit, we can take that and figure out what our return on investment is or our cash on cash return. So very easy, we take our $33,000 and change of profit for an annual basis, divide that into the money that we put in to buy the property, which is 250 grand, and we get a 13.5% return on investment or cash on cash return. So you see, we made it and we had time to spare. It's super easy to run the numbers. So that allows us to go on to make the decision, step number three. Now that you have your metrics and you have your calculations done, here's how you decide if a deal is a go or no go. We wanna basically look at three major factors when we're calculating these numbers. Number one is, does it have positive cash flow? You always wanna aim for a positive cash flow. You don't wanna buy a property and then have to pay money into the property because there's no cash flow. Number two, you want a cash on cash return or return on investment. It's the same thing, we just call it different terms sometimes. Ensure that it's higher than the current going market rates for CDs, which is probably about 6% right now, but we like to target at least 10 to 15% cash on cash return. Third item we calculate is the cap rate. Your deal's cap rate should be higher than the market average. You don't wanna buy a property at the going cap rate or less than the going cap rate. You wanna buy a deal. We like to target properties with at least a 7% cap rate. So based on these three factors, is this property a go or no go? So is there positive cash flow? Check. Is there a cash on cash return greater than 10%? In this case, yes. And is the cap rate greater than 7%? In this case, yes it is. So with positive cash flow, a return on investment of 13% and a cap rate of 10%, you quickly know that this property's a pretty good deal. As it turns out, it's actually a very good deal and not something that's easy to find. So all signs point to getting this property under contract right away. So you see how easy it is? Once you get really comfortable doing this, you can run the numbers lickety split on any deal in just a few minutes. The more real data that you're working with, the more confident you'll be with the actual results, but sometimes you just have to use estimates from the market. So the three simple step process is gather your facts, run the numbers and make a quick decision. So often we don't have perfect data, so we just do a quick back of the napkin calculation to see if it's worth digging in any deeper to see if this is a good deal or not. You can join our five day challenge to learn even more about commercial real estate in the links below. You can begin your journey of building your real estate empire. You can just be a kingpin of real estate. You now have the tools to evaluate any multifamily investment in just five minutes. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more quick and insightful real estate tips. Remember, successful investments start with the right knowledge and you're in the right place for all things commercial real estate. I'll see you in the next video.